can you quieten your 3D printer for mere dollars? Keep watching as I thoroughly test stepper motor dampers. Stepper motor dampers are really gaining traction, therefore I wanted to give them a really thorough test. They're pretty simple, they have two parts metal, one part connects to the 3D printer, the other part connects to the stepper motor, and they've got this rubber bit in between to get rid of the vibrations and frequencies that make all of the noise that we're used to. Seems simple enough, but what about print quality? The fact that the stepper is only attached on two bolts on something flexible, will that lose accuracy and degrade the print? What about temperature? Steppers typically bolt to the frame and they use that as a heat sink to dissipate heat. Will this ability be diminished? Well, I offer my Ender 3 a sacrifice. I'm gonna run the same G-code, same filament, back to back using two different prints. So my first object was this one I designed in Onshape. It's got a couple of features. Firstly, it's got a long section here. So if I bump up the print speed, the acceleration actually allows enough time to reach a high speed. It's got a circular bit down the end to test the balance between X and Y. And then it's got a lot of fast direction changes here to really push those stepper motors. I bought it into Simplify 3D. I upped the scale on X and Y, lowered it a little bit on Z, aiming to make it as long as possible for this fast move here. And then I came to my usual process. I did a couple of other things to make it harder. I bumped up the speed quite fast. I came to the infill and I changed it from rectilinear to full honeycomb, just to give it as many fast direction changes as possible and stress those steppers. I also put up the infill to about 20% so there was enough hexagon pattern to make it worthwhile. Predicted time 14 minutes, real time, more like half an hour. The other model is straight off Thingiverse and it's a low poly Pikachu by Floalistic. It's a nice looking print to compare quality, it's going to take about one hour and it's definitely not a benchy. Onto the test equipment. Firstly, we have this sound meter from JCAR in Australia. It measures decibels, but what are decibels? Decibels are a measure of sound pressure. Double decibels does not equal double volume. In fact, small changes can be significant. Compare 50 to 60 on this graph. It goes from normal conversation to a busy street in only 10 more decibels. Add another 10 again to escalate to a hairdryer being next to your head. I hope you appreciate that a small change in decibel can have a quite significant impact in real life. I'm gonna place this in the exact same position every time next to the printer, watch it for about 10 seconds and take an average. Just for reference, my room is silent at 22. If I turn on a heater across the room, the fan ups that to 36, and next to the printer with the printer sitting idle and only the fans running, puts it up to 46. Next, to measure temperature, we have this laser thermometer. You simply point and shoot, and the reading will come up on the screen telling you your exact temperature. These can be a little bit iffy on certain surfaces such as reflective glass, but I tested it on the heated bed as well as the stepper motors and the readings were quite consistent. So I think we'll be right for this test. The important point is that because we're using the same testing apparatus for all of our tests, we have a good relative baseline and comparison. Now finally to measure quality, we're simply gonna stick our Pikachus underneath the close up camera to look for defects. The first test is with no dampers. The test model is working just as planned. There's a good speed as it goes across that diagonal and there's plenty of noise. The ambient temperature was 17 and it rose and flatlined in the high 20s to 30s for both the X and Y. The stepper motors are not hard to touch, they're only mildly warm. I measure the sound as about 60 decibels while printing. It's certainly not the loudest printer that I have, it's probably about average, but in the middle of the night you can hear it printing from the other end of the house. The high-pitched whines really cut through the night. This Pikachu proves why this printer is so popular, because it looks fantastic. Now that we have a baseline, we're ready to proceed. This is how you fit stepper motor dampers to the X and Y axes. First thing we're going to do for our installation is loosen the grub screws for the drive for the belt. This is going to need to change its offset, and after that, you can undo the screws that hold on the stepper. You'll notice on the damper, there's two different size ones. We're gonna start with the ones without the thread. They're a slightly larger hole. We're gonna use two of the original bolts to attach that to the stepper. And after we've done that, we can use the other two bolts to wind it into the remaining two holes, those that have the thread. Slide back on the little pulley, and then make sure you align that carefully before you tighten up the grub screws and you're done. The X axis is unfortunately a little bit more complicated, but you need to remove the four bolts underneath the QR code sticker. That will remove the piece that holds the end stop. Once again, we're gonna loosen the pulley and the bolts for the motor, slide them all off. 
We attach our damper using the two large holes once again. You will need some separate M3 by 8 bolts, otherwise the other ones will be too long. We get the pulley back on, we make sure everything's aligned, tighten up the grub screw, and then the remaining two bolts to put the front panel back on. Ready for more test prints. So I printed the same two files again, and the results, well, they were quite encouraging. The noise throughout the print dropped about 5 decibels to around 54.55. This definitely takes the edge off and you can no longer hear it from the other end of the house. When it's with you in the room, it's not such a dominant noise. In fact, the fans are now the loudest thing that you notice. The temperatures are similar. The ambient was lower at 11 degrees because this has started earlier in the morning, but it's still flattened off in the same way. The separate motors are still mildly warm to touch. This second Pikachu looks identical and once again, looks fantastic. For this second Pikachu, I also took measurements for temperature throughout the hour long print and it seems to have had no negative implications. When you're in the room with the printer printing, I did notice the loudest or at least the most significant sound is the large retractions on the extruder. I figured it was time to fit a damper on the e-motor as well. Extruder installation is slightly trickier, but we start by removing all of the bolts. You won't be able to see all four until you remove the drive gear as well as the spring and then the extruder arm will be able to swing out of the way and reveal the fourth one. As soon as you loosen this, the whole assembly will come loose. Make sure you don't drop the stepper motor as it comes out. You attach the damper to the stepper, but I wouldn't actually recommend doing it with the orientation I've shown you here. What I found to be more effective was to put in the original bolt that pivots the arm with a nylock nut underneath so it can move freely. Rotate the damper 90 degrees to what you're seeing right now. And let me tell you, that spring is quite hard to get back in and a reminder that you will need more really short bolts to get the damper on this stepper. I printed both models again and here are the results. The volume was measured the same, but in real life the harshness has gone from the occasional fast retraction. It's hard to measure on the meter, but you can definitely tell in person. Once again, the temperatures were similar. There was a different starting ambient temperature, but they rise up as you would expect and then flatline off. There's certainly no concern that they're going to overheat. Now the first way I showed you how to reassemble the extruder in that last clip definitely gave me some issues. The lever arm couldn't swing freely and the spring couldn't get enough tension and that led to massive under extruding. Partway through I made a temporary correction and the print quality returned to normal. Afterwards I mounted it as I showed you in the alternate way in that last clip and it's been reliable ever since. Just for fun, here are the heats torture tests compared. The quality is the same and that's terrible for all of them. They really suffer from bad under extrusion from the high speeds. In this graph, we compare all of the results. It is hard to compare them directly because the starting temperatures were different. Here they are moved to match and there's no obvious difference in temperatures. Now I must make the point that the steppers on the end of three seem to run cooler than other printers. My old Solidoodle 2 ran so hot that it was hot to touch and you needed to have a fan on them, otherwise it would start to skip steps. For such a printer, I would recommend fitting some passive heat sinks or even 3D printing some mounts and putting some 40mm fans on the back to keep your stepper motors cool. That might be needed for some other printers, but for the Ender 3, it prints just great as is. So in summary, the noise reduction is significant and definitely worthwhile. You can read it on the sound meter, but in real life, it's a lot less harsh and it's not so dominant in the room. I'm gonna be getting more of these and fitting them to the X and Y on all of my 3D printers where I can. The extruder, well, that's gonna depend on each printer. I'm currently testing a TiVo Tornado and I noticed that the extruder on that just gave a little bit too much flex when it was offset and it made it unreliable. My advice is to spend a couple of dollars and get some of these for the X and Y stepper motors on your 3D printer. You might like to try the extruder as well and maybe even the Z if you do a lot of printing in VARS mode. Keep in mind that the geometry of the Z is quite different and it's not gonna be able to be fitted to many 3D printers. That's gonna wrap it up for this video. The BL Touch and Easy ABL are on the way. I'm in Australia. I'm hopelessly waiting for parts in the mail, but hopefully they'll be here any day now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Until then, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you wanna see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really wanna support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.